Hi, everybody, and welcome. Uh, thanks for dropping by this presentation and attending the virtual event at the uh, the ASA Cyber Conference. Today, you've got uh, myself, Jeff Schomburg, and my colleague, Alex Wilson, from Ubico, and we're going to have a bit of a chat about creating effective authentication strategy in a zero-trust post-pandemic world. So briefly, just to get started, like to for those of you that are not familiar with Ubico, just a brief introduction to who we are. Uh, we're a company that was uh, founded and born out of Sweden, but has moved our head office to Palo Alto in Silicon Valley in California. And uh, over the journey of the last 10 years or so, we've been able to protect over 4,000 businesses and uh, 10 million users of the YubiKey uh, scattered around the globe across some 160 countries. And uh, many of the, the top tech companies that you will know, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and so on, are active users of the YubiKey. And uh, we're very happy with that. Not only that, we, we work to open standards. Um, that's key for us to, to getting the YubiKeys out there and securing people and uh, their lives online. And we work with uh, a catalogue of some over 700 uh, different applications, including the identity and access management uh, providers. And Alex will talk about that in a moment. But today you have the privilege of, uh, of speaking to Ubico's Australian team. That's Jeff and Alex and uh, supported by two top tier blokes. We're based in, in Melbourne. Uh, we're in Canberra for the, for the Acer event and we're very happy to be out of lockdown and uh, the, the opportunity to to meet with you if you're able to join us in person or at least to talk today uh, via this forum. But uh, that is uh, two top tier blokes who are going to tell you all about uh, zero trust and uh, how to go with authentication. Alex, let's take us through it. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, I think we all understand what has occurred over the past year. Um, we have been thrust into a zero trust world. Um, we've been talking about zero trust for a number of years and also before that digital transformation. Uh, digital transformation was a concept where people were slowly moving towards and considering a two or three year um, transition. However, COVID threw us into this instantly, both digital transformation almost overnight. But now that everyone is accessing your information, our information from traditionally a remote location, um, most of the trust zones, most of the perimeter, most of the actions that we previously took start to come into question. So the concept zero trust architecture is being thrust upon us. Let's think about zero trust and what is it, first of all. Uh, there's a whole range of good diagrams out there and pretty pictures, but we like this one. Um, the diagram at the bottom from F5 talks about zero trust and four concepts. Um, at the top left, where I'll be spending most of my time, is talking about identity and access management and specifically authentication. Moving round clockwise, we talk about trusted application access. So modernized and having modern authentication for all applications that we're running. Explicitly moving down into the app layer security, um, there used to be DevOps, now it's Sec DevOps or DevOps Sec, whichever way you want to pronounce it. So development, operation, and security should work hard and hand in hand when our applications are being developed. And then finally, the infrastructure, the, where are applications and data? Whereas before we had network trust because we brought everyone into our network. Now everything's coming across the internet and there's many devices both hardware and pieces of software that you do not have control over. And you know how can we do network level protection? So let's think about authentication with identity management as being critical to zero trust architecture. What are the, the five pillars? And I'll talk about these as we move forward. Identity proofing, making sure we know that the person, whoever that person is that's coming into our organization is who they say they are. Authentication scope. Um, when a person authenticates and is trying to get access to an application or a piece of data, let's make sure that it's limited to we trust nothing and we only give them access to one thing. Strong authentication. We'll talk about what strong authentication is and is not. Device attestation. 
slightly more modern concept, and we'll talk about attestation specifically within authentication and why it's purposeful. And then finally, step up authentication. And I think most people understand what that is, but we'll revisit it as we round out this session. Okay, so think about identity proofing. I know that in my business, I've hired an employee based in Japan. Traditionally, I would have gone and met that person, seen that person, shook their hand, you know, built some trust before we gave them access to our information. That has been impossible within the COVID environment. So relying on identity proofing and remote identity proofing and then tying an authenticator to that individual is critical when thinking about the zero trust architecture. Additionally, two-factor authentication is as important as ever, but what we must utilize is strong authentication methods. Now, strong authentication methods, uh, we understand the three pillars of authentication, something you know, something you have, something you are. When we think of something you know, utilizing a PIN, which unlocks a credential on a physical device, something you are, a biometric, um, and that has been adopted widely through most mobile applications and now support within Windows operating systems. But this also must be paired with a very strong authentication method. And what we're talking about is asymmetric key encryption or public-private key pair ceremony validating the credential. Now, we talked about strong authentication. So not all authentication modes are equal. This simple XY access talks about ease of use to the right, strength of security on the vertical access. Now, username and password has been around since the 1960s. Uh, everyone knows it. Everybody, I'm not going to say they love it, but it was anyone who joins IT or starts using computers very quickly understands they cannot get in unless they give a username and password. Now, the industry has gone through many iterations of trying to make that more complex because they wanted it to be more secure. But the resultant things that have happened is one-time password came along. Um, the combination of one-time password and a me memorized secret certainly been out there for a long time. Mobile phones came along, which, hang on, this was a phone device that became had some mobile apps on it and then became a security device. So it wasn't designed with security in mind, but it's become the predominant way that we get access to our social and just about everything else we want. However, if you want strong authentication, we have to have some type of cryptography. Asymmetric is much more um, phishing resistant than symmetric cryptography that's traditionally deployed within one-time passwords. Um, smart card is something that's been around for a long time. Um, what we feel in, at YubiKey is that we need to deliver a product and protocols that are highly resistant to phishing and man-in-the-middle attacks, support a broad range of authentication challenges that you may get, and have the strongest and best user experience possible. And that is what we feel with the YubiKey for our customers. Now, let's get into att attestation, and specifically device attestation uh, for these computers. Now, why do we have them? Well, the attestation capabilities are a separate mechanism within the authentication uh, pattern, where it confirms that the physical thing that you're authenticating from is patched, is healthy, and it is of a specific manufacturer, and the credentials were minted on that device explicitly. They weren't imported from somewhere else. Now, when we look at computers or mobiles, obviously we have a wide range of additional protections that as an organization we must apply before we can get that attestation. When we move to hardware tokens explicitly, attestation is an important component, but we have a lot less to worry about. This, the YubiKey in our business and also other products from other vendors, the attestation states that it was manufactured by this uh, company, this vendor, trusted vendor, 
and the credentials were minted or created on the key at the appropriate time and not imported from some other possibly dodgy source. It is important for zero trust. Um, it is a key pair that's burned into the device during manufacturing. Um, and it is a, you can trust the originator of that authenticator. Uh, in our case, this is Ubico, and, and we are one of the most trusted uh, security providers in the world. And we also provide information on the models and capabilities through that attestation. And you can verify again that it's that the public key was on that device and came from that device. Now, it, Zero Trust itself needs to rely on strong authentication. However, implementing Zero Trust architecture takes time and there's many aspects of it, not all to do with authentication. However, some of the easy wins and the, the best place to start is implementing strong authentication up front. It provides instant value early on. You can reduce some of the complexity of your existing authentication mechanisms and your user resistance to using those mechanisms. Because what traditionally happens if an organization, say, implements software-based authenticators or an OTP protocol across everyone, inevitably that will be in place for a long, long time. So being able to change it later is sometimes very difficult. So encouraging strong authentication up front or a product that supports what you need today but supports future strong authentication methods is something that should be a priority. Single sign-on, critical uh, parameter for zero trust. Uh, the identity and access management platforms provide a range of benefits with centralized control, a range of analytics, and definitely reducing the user friction as they single sign-on into other applications. These products must support trust zones as we move forward, and they incorporate based on what the user needs today rather than what they may need tomorrow. Start to utilize risk levels, and we start to think about step-up authentication. Does your identity and access management have conditional approval that if the user moves to another application or another data source, do you want to step up the authentication? And do you have the products, alternate methods of authentication available for your users to use when they're getting asked for that? Modern authentication allows this. So thinking of creating an effective authentication strategy in a zero trust world, some of the quick wins that we can apply from an organization and from a, a decision viewpoint is create common patterns across teams. Give them guidelines or guardrails to work within. Don't determine what a specific product is that they should use or a vendor. Focus on a protocol or a standard or a, a common language that everyone should move towards. Lead with identity. You may not be able to rely on your existing identity platforms to achieve zero trust architecture. Implementing strong authentication is something you should do uh, continually and today and modernize where possible. As we step up, we start to think of ongoing challenges such as step up authentication, ability to utilize attestation, maybe not today, but at some point in the future and striving for the essential eight level three maturity as defined by the uh, Australian Signals Directorate with the cybersecurity capabilities. Jeff. Thanks, Alex. That's great. And uh, I hope that's a, a comprehensive view of you know, authentication in that zero trust world. So, so the question is, where to from here? What do, you, what do you do next? And I think we've highlighted some areas where there are some quick wins. Certainly from the YubiKey and YubiCo's perspective, we think the best thing to do is just get started and try the keys. Um, because it's open standards and it's integrated with a range of existing platforms, you can get started and you know, turn the key on and the features are available very easily and quickly. Um, if you're interested in integration into platforms, that we have a fantastic developer program where there's a whole range of resources that are available 
uh, online and through our developer program, which you can register on to, to get those resources and start rapid integration. It's, uh, it's a great program. And then, as Alex mentioned, you know, because we work to open standards, we have an ecosystem of well over 700 different, uh, different partners, including the identity and access management partners, who are sort of, because we work to open standards, pre-integrated out of the box to work with, with the YubiKey. So if it's identity providers, Ping, Okta, Duo, Microsoft, that's available. If you're talking about other applications, and that might be VPN providers and so on. So that, that ecosystem is there, and I encourage you to look online at our, at our website. Uh, if you search for Works with YubiKey Catalog, um, that will list all of those, and, and you can have a look at uh, how easy it is to get started there. So thanks for your attention today. I hope that's really useful. Um, you're most welcome to come and visit us. We're at uh, stand number 25 if you're able to join us in person. If not, um, visit us online. That's uh, Jeff and Alex at Yubico. And, Hi, I hope that's useful. Thanks for your attention and, uh, and enjoy the conference all. Thank you.